Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Dustin. Today, it's Enhanced Bolts on JP Product Focus. So let's talk about Bolt. You've been at JP longer than I have. So I'm, I'm a little bit more interested in the history of how JP came around with, with producing this Bolt that really, honestly, is the industry standard. I mean, everybody's trying to meet us when it comes to this bolt, for yep. sure. No, absolutely, and, and like many other things in, in JP's history, it starts out with you know, insufficient or, or you know, quality lacking products out in the market, you know, something that just didn't meet our requirements. They weren't able to hold the specs that we wanted or were having various failures. So like many things, you know, we start producing our own bolts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the, the history there, it, you know, it started of course with a 223 uh, enhanced bolt. So your 223, 556, at the time we were doing 204 and a lot of the other cartridges that use that same uh, case head size. So that was the first one to be introduced. And, and at that point, you know, with the materials we're using and everything else, we were able to greatly extend the overall life expectancy of the bolts um, to where we have now, where there's a, you know, a huge variety we're doing for a lot of different chamberings and, and calibers. So um, really excited that we have taken that product and become a company that all these other high-end barrel manufacturers trust if you're going to, and I won't name names, but some of the big companies out there where they're chambering that for you, they only will guarantee that that barrel will headspace with their bolt if you buy a JP bolt because of the tolerances we hold. Yeah, and you know, you bring that up. I, you know, shooting competition, I met a lot of matches, I meet a lot of people, and the one comment I hear from a lot of people is like, hey, I built my own rifle, and when I ordered my barrel, it came with the JP bolt. So you guys must be the the, yeah. the leaders in the bolt. So yeah, I mean, we're trying, kind of tooting our own horn here, but it is it's it is true. And you get 10, you know, in excess of 10 times the life expectancy of a normal bolt. So th there, there are a lot of those things that from where we started to where we've come and, and you know, and where we've ended up is, is such a dramatic difference. And when people talk about reliability, they talk about, you know, being able to have that rifle that either is gonna make it through the matches that, you know, because they don't want to lose, or if it's more, uh, more serious and you don't want to lose your life, so you need to be able to trust that piece of equipment. Right. Those two things factor in together, good quality parts, you know, history that makes the best product. All right, so what, what is it exactly about our bolt that's gonna stand out? You know, like the bolt black, is that the same black that I'm gonna see in another bolt? I'm gonna completely come at this as yep. a noob for the, you know, a lot of people that are wanting to get into firearms right now, they don't understand this, so let's really break that down. So tell me, like, yep. I'm new. To me. Yeah, a lot of it, it does come down to the details. I mean, and you can't have a good product without starting with a good base material. And we use an, uh, a 9310 steel that's it's the same type of steel that was used in F1 race car transmission gear. So it can handle tons of shock loading. It's extremely durable, very, very strong. Um, you know, and with the proper heat treatments and everything, you get, you get a bolt that is very unlikely to have failures. Like I said, you're gonna get an extremely long life expectancy out of them. Um, the coating uh, that we do on that 9310 is a DLC coating, so a diamond-like coating. Diamond-like surface, yeah, or coating, yep. yep. Um, one of the other features that we do on here, and we'll get some close-ups so you can look, but around the cam pin hole, we actually do what we call our, our fat band bolts, and they all are set up with that at this point. It's almost one of those features that's kind of fallen into the background because it, it just it's what it should have been right In from the, the beginning place, right? to, to, to make the bolt strong. So now it's, it's not even something I necessarily talk about real often, but it makes an enormous difference because one of the common spots where bolts will break is they'll break right across that cam pin yeah. slot because it's yeah. a little bit thinner there. So more material all the way along in that area and a little bit better, bigger bearing surface areas on here as well just to keep everything in alignment. Yeah, and I was going to say, one, one of the things that you see a lot of, whether you're at forums, you're at a match, uh, if you've been at the range, even some of you guys watching this, you've broke a bolt and you've broke it right there. And I hear a lot of people like, is this, is this common? Is this normal? And yes, yeah, so that is where the bolt is, you know, going to break. Yeah. And by adding that, you know, the fat band that JP's added on there, that helps extend the life of the bolt. Yeah, quite a bit. You know, th there's those two points. You either are shearing a lug or breaking right. the bolt in half here. Um, the material that we chose, again, that having that, that base material that's got the right features to it, the right specs to it, makes all that difference in the world. So really, very rare that we have anything where, where we actually see any breakage on either of those spots at this point. So great setup. You know, the coating, the base material. And I would say one of the features of the bolt has to be, it has to be said again, is the, is the machining tolerances. 
And these kind of components where, you know, you can tolerance stacking between the various parts coming together, that is a big feature, having that type of machining quality and then finish. Yeah. Really and if you've watched it. a lot of our videos, you've heard us talk about JP spec, and that's what's going on here. John Paul has set a spec, you know, the tolerances that he wants, whether it's a, the receiver or anything down, but it goes all the way down to the bolt and the subcomponents that are yeah. in the bolt. Even if it makes the machinist gasp a little bit when they, when they hear what right. we want to hold, hey, that's what we need to do to get the right product. Yeah. So that is a good little overview on the materials and the finishes that we have on those bolts. So we've talked about, you know, 223 caliber, but what other calibers do we offer with our bolts? Sure. So, you know, of course, any cartridge that's going to have that, that same head size as the 223, you're going to be able to utilize, utilize that bolt. So you're talking about... For, for the people that are new, you're talking about like a 5.56? Five, five, yep, 223 Remington 5.56, five, five, our 220, 223 Wild Chamber that we do. Uh, things like the 204 Ruger, and there's a little bit more to that list as well. Um, then we do our 6.5 Grendel Bolt, and that's uh, uh, the Spec 2 Chamber that would set up for. Um, phenomenal setup, I mean, and it was really important to get those uh, made correctly and, and ultimately the materials we're using, so on and so forth, just that quality in the materials made a big difference because there's a much thinner outer wall, right. uh, you know, between the lugs and the bolt face there than there is on a, say, a 223 bolt. So in incredibly important for that to be very, very strong material. Um, those have been phenomenal. We've, we've seen, you know, extremely few problems out of them and they run super smooth. Uh, next, we've got the 6.8 SPC2 bolt, which ultimately what jump started that for us was the, the, the Valkyrie project, the 224 Valkyrie. Right. Um, so obviously those are another couple setups where you can use either one. Um, with the 6.8, there is a 6.8 SPC and a 6.8 SPC2. Bolt can be used in either one of those. So okay. worthwhile mentioning. So on I have that a end. question. There, you know, you're seeing a lot of popularity right now with the small frame, but being a 300 blackout. Yep. 300 Blackout is going to use your normal 223.556 bolt. So just clarifying that, yep. super easy. So I mean, there's very little to have to switch over on a build if you're if you're con converting a previously 556 223 setup mm -hmm. into a uh, into a 300 Blackout. Uh, then we get into our large frame bolts in here. That's the, that's the best part, right? Large frame. Large frame. Yeah, yeah, it's the only way to go. So we've got our JP Enhanced 308 bolt and our JP Enhanced 308 high pressure bolt. Okay. You know, um, a lot of the things on them are very similar, but one of the big differences in that high pressure bolt is it uses a smaller diameter firing pin channel and a smaller diameter matched firing pin. So the goal there is to not have as big of an opening sitting against the primer. So now you're going to get better primer support by the bolt face and it, it almost eliminates any of the pierce primers or primer cratering issues that you see in some of the higher pressure cartridges. So that brings us to, do you need a high pressure bolt on your 308? Not necessarily. In most situations, it wouldn't be needed. But when you get into a 243, 260, six millimeter Creedmoor, six five Creedmoor, some of these higher pressure cartridges. So you, you yep. do see a lot of guys that will have two uppers, but they're wanting, running one complete carrier. Right, so they'd have a 6.5 upper for their lower, then a 308 upper. Yep. And if they're just gonna run the one carrier, of course they wanna make sure that everything checks out with the headspace, but they would run a high pressure. Correct, bolt at yeah. That point. You always have to pick, uh, you know, what's the worst case scenario? It's kind of if you're running a suppressor on a gun, you need to do the things that, that will help it to run suppressed. Still gonna work unsuppressed, but so same mentality where if, you, if you're into that high pressure, one of the cartridges you're shooting is either that, that 6 or 6.5 Creedmoor, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter that the other is a 308, you're gonna to go to the high pressure. Okay. So that's a good little overview on those guys. Now, obviously there's a lot of cartridges out there with a 308 case head size. So um, there's some, quite a bit of variety on, on where you could use those. Um, all of the bolts are available either as the standalone bolt itself, or you can get that as the bolt completion group. So it's the bolt, firing pin, cam pin, and retaining pin, or you can get a complete bolt carrier group. So we've got a lot of options out there and how you can utilize them. One thing I will mention is the high pressure bolt is the only one that comes with its firing pin, even if you're just buying the bolt itself. So that's a required part for it. Uh, and you know, honestly, you can't go wrong any step of the way, but I like getting that complete package because you get you know, some of the real high end right. subcomponents that we put in there as well. All right, so we've talked about how we redesigned the bolt, but we didn't stop there. We went as far as redesigning 
everything. So from all the subcomponents. So let's start with the extractors. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because you can have that core bolt piece and, and have it be super strong, everything else, uh, and it'll go into lockup nice. But if the ejector's not working right, if, if all these parts, extractor or so on, aren't gonna work right, you've got problems. And and ultimately, I think we found that the, the, the DPMS style large frame 308 extractors were inherently flawed. And so that was a pretty early on item that had to be revamped. And we didn't want to add dual extractors, anything like that. It's, mm -hmm. It shouldn't be necessary. If the part is designed correctly, it's engaging the rim of the case correctly, you know, you've got a good product. Um, so that was a big step. The extractors are extremely strong. They're, I mean, the reliability on them, I know I've abused the heck out of them in some of my guns, uh, running, you know, some stuff way over gas for, for what it should have been. Um, and, and they just rip those cartridges right out. It's also incredibly important that extractor for it to have good purchase on the rim, because then the ejector needs to be able to use that essentially as a hinge to right. get that case out. So a lot of people will talk about uh, thinking they have an ejector problem because their brass is staying in the upper receiver. It's not actually getting thrown out, so they think it's it's that action. But really the problem is generally that the case rim is not being held by the extractor, so it can't pivot that out. So incredibly important part. Um, you know, we've got them all the way down the line there, of course, the 308, the 65, mm -hmm. 68 extractor, and our enhanced 223 extractor. Right. So if, you, if you're running a, a, a you know, just a, a mil spec bolt, you're not interested in running our complete bolt, we do sell these uh, by themselves yep. so you can actually update your... Yeah, and again, huge difference. Um, the extraction pattern and injection pattern because of the extractors working correctly on, on a, like a large frame of DPMS style 308. Okay huge improvement by being able to have that reverse compatibility again didn't need to redesign the wheel or how it fit yep. but just make a better part so next time you break your your extractor look us up at jprifles.com and we'll, we'll have that part there for you so let's move on to something that i i get a lot of questions on oh, yeah. when i'm at the range um i get messages on through social everything people always want to know because there's the traditional bolt test in the carrier well, for the gas ring. So let's talk about the gas ring because yep. it is something new that if you've never messed with a gas ring and now you go to do it, this thing could throw you off or throw you for a loop. But let's get into why we have it. Yep, absolutely. So the, the idea there to get a gas ring that wasn't going to provide a ton of drag or cause a ton of drag, but still get that proper gas seal, you know, that we, we just need to use that gas, but we don't want to have any other inherent drag in the system. You know, we've got our super smooth coatings, we've got our, our, our bolt carriers super slick, silent captured spring system, all these things removing drag out of mm -hmm. the system, making it run slicker. And then you've got your traditional rings, which, I mean, you can feel just how gritty those things are. Right. There's excess uh, force in there. So the precision one piece gas ring, uh, it's a precision ground gas ring, and we'll get some close ups here so you can see how it works. Uh, but you get a fantastic gas seal without the drag. Think about it like the modern engine and yep. you, you, your rings on your pistons on the engine. There's a reason why they last so, so long, because better materials, also the grind that they have on them. So you're not wearing them away horribly. And also fuel economy goes up because there isn't as much drag. Same kind of principle on here. Um, we see phenomenal life uh, lifespans out of these things. And they also actually help to clean, because of that, that edge and how that grind works, they actually clean that, that bore of the bolt carrier as it's traveling back and forth. Right. Now, in, when we're talking about the bolt test, is, you know, a lot of times yeah. you'll have somebody grab a carrier and they want to check their gas ring and they'll hold it upside down. And if the bolt falls down, they're like, oh, my gas rings are shot. However, if you have a JP one piece gas ring and you put it on there and you hold your bolt upside down or your carrier upside down, the bolt will fall down yep. every time. That doesn't mean it's bad. Nope. That's actually what we're looking for. And that is the, you know, that's the prime setup. So no more looking to see like, you know, you have the people like, oh, I made sure all of my gaps on my gas ring are all, none of them are lined up right. So I'm catching all the gas. This is, this does everything for you. And it's actually easier to install yes. than the three different gas rings you actually have to put on there. Yeah, you just do this just like a keychain. Just get that one edge started and it's twist right on there, super easy to deal with. So I would I recommend anyone that gets one of these guys, they're looking at it, they think it's just way too loose, get it in the gun, get out to the range, and you're gonna have a heck of a time, have a good time out there shooting, because yep. it's gonna work wonderful. So we got two of those, we got uh, yep. 308, 65 Creed, and then the 223. Yep, so it basically there's two units, and it is, uh, it's a DPMS style gas ring. Okay. So there is a slight difference between the Armalite style bolts and the DPMS style 308 bolts. And it is more keyed towards that, that DPMS LR 308 style bolt. 
Um, and then the small frame ring, which we'll work on, you know, as we mentioned, any, any of the, the small frame bolts that we have here. So 6.8 SPC, 6.5 Grendel, 223. Right. So uh, really slick setups. Great to have. I always like to have just a couple in the bag just because they last really, really long time. But heck, if you need one, super cheap, super easy to get in there. Right. Don't let your friends know you have it if you go to the range because their gun will fell eventually and they're going to come back and they're going to want your one piece gas ring. I learned that the hard way. So let's get into ejectors because you were talking about that earlier with the extractors. So let's get into ejectors. What's so important about a JP ejector? You know, and this is one of those like small minutiae kind of things where, you know, especially reloaders and whatnot, they're going to they're gonna really pay attention to this. Um, you know, the smear that you can get on that case head stamp mm -hmm. on the back of the brass. Um, so to eliminate some of the of the smearing that happens there, or almost the brass extruding into the to that slot, um, you know, of course the precision machining that's holding the correct tolerances, so that you know the hole in the face of the bolt, you know, you have a nice tight tolerance to the size of the of the ejector pin. Um, also, there's a slight dome to the top of it, mm -hmm. again to help reduce any dragging or pulling up of any burrs on the back of that brass. And so. Once again, like you were saying, like this may not seem like it's a big deal to some of, some of your shooters out there, but if you are a reloader, this is very important because you're going to destroy brass a lot faster yep. and you're not getting the full full life cycle out of the brass itself. Yep, and everything is expensive these days, so the more you can reuse that brass, you know, save life on those. And also, you know, if you're not getting material that's trying to, to extrude down, you know, into that channel for the ejector, mm -hmm. there's less chance that anything is going to bind up you know, get, right. get stuck there. So uh, simple, but an important, very important part. What do we have, uh, what do we coat those with? Uh, those I believe are uh, DLC coated. Nice. Now, is there any way to test a ejector? If I'm out, if I'm out at the range, I'm a new shooter, I pull out my bolt because I'm having some issues. Is there a way I can test that and, and determine if it's bad? Yeah, I mean, generally I'll, I'll, I'll take a, a piece of brass uh, and I'll, you know, get kind of hooked under the extractor and just push down on the ejector and make sure you're getting good spring action out of that. You can also, of course, if you have a, a, a pen or something like that, mm -hmm. just anything you can use that's not going to scratch up the bolt or anything, just to be able to push down, make sure that the ejector is plunging down freely in and out. And that's about uh, all you need to make sure that that thing's working. So one thing about the, the JP springs with the ejector is that um, I've seen people with a pin, they, they go to test it. I mean, it is, it is stiff. And look, I, I think this is too stiff. No, that's back to the JP spec. That is the design that we have, and we've designed it that way for a reason. John Paul is a freaking wizard when it comes to things like this. He's brought in a phenomenal engineering team to make sure everything runs the way it was intended to run from the yeah, day one. There's a ton of history, you know, just the knowledge base that generates these products. And then, you know, the, the, the the engineering process and, and the kind of the flushing out of, of that idea and making sure that is it doing what we want it to do? Is it, you know, is it making that improvement? And, you know, fortunately working for a great company like JP, they've just nailed so many of these aspects that, that really made so that you turned a semi-auto rifle that was and not considered a precision rifle, get all of these things working together and the type of accuracy functionality, reliability that you can get really makes a difference. Awesome. So now we've talked about the actual subcomponents that attach to the to the bolt itself. Yep. Let's take a step back to the subcomponents that are part of the bolt assembly with yeah, bolt the external, group, yeah. Yeah, external parts. Yeah. So let's start with the firing pins. I, we've got four of them up here. Let's get into that. Yeah, absolutely. So you got your standard small frame, uh, you know, 223 style or, you know, for the 6.5, mm -hmm. 6.8 SPC, 224 Valkyrie, you know, standard firing pin there. Um, got in a stainless steel option. Um, and then we also do a titanium version for that. Now the titanium, sometimes people think that, uh, you know, it's, it's fancier, so it's gotta be better for all scenarios. Uh, there is a specific reason why we have a titanium firing pin. And that's when, with the ultra low mass bolt carriers, you pick up bolt carrier velocity. So it's moving faster. And you got to make sure that that pin, the weight of that pin, doesn't have enough inertia since they're all free floating, where it can strike the the primer and and cause essentially a slam fire. Right. So that you're going to use that that uh, titanium pin in certain spots, um, but otherwise, you know, the stainless pin holds up very well. So for for the people that are new, the ultralight carrier is an aluminum carrier, and when he's talking about the free floating pin, is if you've gotten if you had an AR and you shot your AR and then you drop the mag out and you rack the round out, you're gonna see that the primer has a little dent in there. And that is because it is free floating, so when the bolt and carrier group come forward, 
the uh, yeah. firing pin inertia, will, the inertia yeah. of it will push it forward. It's not enough to make it go off, but that is why. So that is the options, and that's we have, that's why we have a titanium pin there. Now, uh, same type of scenario. We, we've got the the 308 pin. So for the JP Enhanced 308 bolt. So that's standard size at LR 308 style. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the titanium high pressure bolt or high pressure firing pin. Now, same kind of scenario there. We have a, the aluminum ultra low variable mass carrier for the large frame rifles. And that's that type of scenario where we'd use that to reduce that, that mass, uh, that inertia that could go into the, into the primer. Um, and then also we do a stainless steel version of that high pressure pin as well. I don't have enough fingers for these like <laughs> on one hand. So you want to show the kind of show yep. them, walk them through the designs of each one? Yep, ultimately. So, you know, there's some considerations in here for weight and then ultimately just strength. Because again, that weight is a consideration depending on the material that it's made out of. Um, and you can actually see that in the titanium pin, it's actually a little bit thicker during the, at where it steps down in here. Uh, we removed a little more material on the, on the stainless version because we don't want it to be too heavy. Right. So again, right. kind of getting that optimal weight so you have the strength you need. And, um, and the weight that you need also to, to maintain safety. All right, so we broke down the firing pins. Let's get into the relationship between the bolt being inside the carrier pin and what kind of ties that together. Yep, that's where we get into our cam pins. And again, that's another one of those parts where you might not think about it a whole lot. You just say, oh, I need a cam pin, and you go and find whatever was on the shelf. Um, the relationship between that bolt and the carrier, you know, it's got to it's got to travel in that cam pin slot, which causes the bolt to rotate. Now, if there's too much slop in the cam between the cam pin and that channel, your bolt can rotate, and that can affect the alignment between your star chamber lugs and the lugs on the bolt. So, it is very important that those things that it keeps the timing correct, it keeps that motion correct. So, again, uh, in doing inspection on parts coming in, you get tired of of having to reject stuff because it's undersized, it allows too much play in there, and also everyone kind of knows that that thick gray coating that's on a lot of cam pins, it mm -hmm. just ends up wearing off, um, you know. And again, then you're changing those tolerances. So here at JP, we came out with our own enhanced cam pin, uh, slick unit. You know, again, one of the main things on it is pay that attention to the machining steps, holding that incredibly tight tolerance so that you get the correct fitment, the relationship between the bolt, the cam pin, and the carrier, uh, so that the function is correct. Also, um, all the edges have been rounded off. The head was designed in a way so it's easier to install and remove. Um, it also has a fantastic slick QPQ coating. So just like the black bolt carriers with that real slick coating, the same QPQ finish on there. So longevity, you know, the quality, the, the tolerance, everything is there for you. Simple part but a beautiful part. All right, now what holds all of that together as far as keeping the, the firing pin in there so it keeps the cam pin locked in? Yep, so you got your firing pin retaining pins, you know, cotter pin basically. Yep. So this is another one of those things where it's, oh, you know, anyone will do, but especially in the large frame, because we know the small frame, most of the, the mil spec styles are like this, but in the large frame, you know, they'd gone to just kind of what looked like a little nail head yep. with a split on the end. Uh, for the large frame 308 styles, those things fall out as soon as you pull the carrier out. So if you have anything in the field where you have to pull that carrier out, if there's grass, you know, thing falls out, it's I, gone. I've seen so it happen. It, it almost felt like a step backwards to me because I thought that little pin looked kind of cool when I was, you know, when, when I didn't understand fully. And it felt like, oh, we're just going to a cotter pin. Nobody makes that. Nobody makes that. So here we are. JP's making that cotter pin for the large frame style. It retains beautifully. It does everything you want it to do. Easy to work with, easy to manipulate. You know, you've got the loop on the one side if you do need to right. fish it out of there. So a phenomenal part that holds everything together. The culmination of, of all these high quality components all held together by a cotter pin. All of these are simple design that have met, been designed to meet JP specs to give you the ultimate bolt carrier Absolutely, and it is the ultimate bolt carrier group. So that's enhanced bolts and subcomponents on JP Product Focus. Once again, I'm Ben. I'm Dustin. If you have any questions about this subject or you have your own bolt failure horror story, we would love to hear about that in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, follow us on all of our social media platforms, and Ben's gonna be selling stuff, so I will see you guys at the range.